<clears throat> Hello, everybody. Live, live, live. Just wanted to hop on here, guys, and answer your questions, your dog training questions. Um, this is also something I've been wanting to do because uh, you guys have just been awesome, and I haven't posted a lot of videos uh, this week. So I wanted to hop on here live and answer your questions. So when you get in here, uh, let me know you guys are here as well as uh, just leave a comment. And then we're going to get started. I appreciate you guys hopping on. What's up, Devin? Christina? Manuel? Adam? Logan? Robin? Richard? What's going on? Whoa, cool. What's up, Jordan? Hope everyone's doing well. Cool, cool. Yeah, there's a cat in here somewhere. Again, Tammy, Beverly, what's going on? Janelle, Daniel, or Danielle, sorry, Terrence. Cool. All right, guys, so we're just going to, like I said, I just want to, Samuel, what's going on? I just wanted to hop in here and just uh, answer your questions. Uh, I'm going to go over some Q&As. I uh, was a couple minutes late because I was out helping. Uh, I was on a walk with my dog, Thompson, my St. Bernard, and uh, there was a loose dog, and the cops were, like, trying to help, and the young guy was, like, chasing the dog and couldn't get to him. So I was out there running around. So sorry I'm a couple minutes late. Um, so let's just get rolling in with some questions. If you guys don't have any questions, just drop a comment. Let me know you guys are from, um, and we're going to do a, a giveaway at the end of the video. I'm going to give away a free No Bad Dogs uh, signature leash, the red ones that I use in my dog training videos. <clears throat> What's up, Corey? All right. Thank you, Pam. Mississippi. Brianna asks, how can I help my three- or four-month-old puppy with the fear of loud noises? Well, First thing you got to do is desensitization. So if your dog is afraid of, of certain things, uh, the first thing to do is desensitization. That's the best thing to do is just get them exposed to, to new things. Dogs specifically, if they're raised in a non-environmentally um, like different things going on and then they go to a new place, it becomes very stressful for them. So lots of positive reinforcement. I'd go to a semi-ish busy area, maybe like a Lowe's or a Home Depot or a place where there's going to be kind of loud noises, but nothing too crazy and just bring some motivation, some food, give them some motivations. If you guys are here, go ahead and like this video really quickly. Let me know you guys are here. And uh, like I said, I just want to, this is uh, giving back to you guys. We've gained um, just a lot of subscribers and I wasn't able to put out as many videos as I usually do this week. So I just, this is my way to thank you guys uh, for, for supporting me. Uh, liking and commenting and all the stuff that I do. Congratulations to all the people who uh, won some free stuff and the free online stuff. It was very nice to meet everybody. I appreciate everybody uh, supporting me and supporting the movement, supporting the No Bad Dogs, and um, just helping each other in the comments has been really cool to see. You guys have been like answering each other's comments, uh, referring to videos, uh, even sticking up for me in, in certain situations where I don't see all that nonsense stuff. So I just wanted to give back to you guys and hop on here and answer your questions. So again, thank you guys so much for the support. I'm excited. Um, and again, we're going to do a giveaway at the end of the video. <clears throat> how uh, obedience is best. How young is it okay for an e-collar training? I have a four-month-old. Um, e-collar, it's a great question. I, I would say like between four to six months is probably the youngest um, I would go. It, it really just depends on how well the dog understands the obedience. So as you know, e-collar training is, is something that we're going to apply to to enforce uh, behaviors the dog already knows. So when we're doing e-collar training, the most important thing is the dog knows the things you're asking them to do. So um, that would be fine. You just don't want to teach new things with the e-collar at that age. You want to enforce the things that they already know. So that would be fine. Um, how can you tell when a dog understands the e-collar? Uh, and again, guys, I'm going to be on here live just answering as many questions as I possibly can. So don't worry if I don't get yours. Well, I'll try to get to as many as I can. Um, so that's a great question about how how do you tell if a dog understands the e-collar. You want to make sure that you get a, a, a nice unit, first of all. Um, I think that that's like widely misunderstood that the units that you're supposed to be using 
are units that have low enough uh, stimulation to communicate with the dog. Um, so you want to make sure that the e-collar that you have has a low enough stimulation for the dog to uh, to respond well to. Um, so some some physical or external things that you can see on a dog when they when they feel the sensation is eye twitching. So they do this a little bit. They're kind of like, what's that? Uh, much like if somebody poked you and you're you know poked you like that, except it's 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 uh it's it's not physical. So they're kind of like trying to figure it out. Um, one thing that you want to make sure of with the remote collar is uh, we just had a Rottweiler come in and deal with the same thing about uh, the, do the dog was in conditioning mode, which means we're layering in the e-collar, very non-aversive non, uh, at all, very non-corrective. Hey, do you get it? Do you feel this? This is me, buddy. Very positive experience, very lovely, enjoyable experience for the dog. And he was kind of like, he was kind of like trying to do this, trying to figure out like what it was. And if your dog does that, that means it's just a little too high in the conditioning stages. So um, let's see. I have a two-year-old golden retriever. Ah, I have a two-year-old golden retriever. How do I get her to stop jumping on myself, especially uh, my clumsy three-year-old? <laughs> it's a good question. Um, you know, you guys, for me, it's, it's about a, creating a template. So just making sure that whatever your dog is dealing with, all the onlines that I, that I do, guys, and all of the videos that I put out, um, it, it's a template of what are, you, what are you actually doing about it. So if a dog is doing something that you don't like, especially if it's a very primal behavior, like it's not like a behavioral issue where they're like very neurotic and they're attacking things or they're whining or something like that. It's not a behavioral modification issue. It's more of a leash training issue. So if your dog is pulling on the leash, you have to teach him heel. If your dog is jumping on you, you have to teach him off. And as you guys know, I've trained so many different ways of dog training throughout the, the years that I've been doing this. And one of the most effective ways for, for really stable, like secure dogs is just to just give them some sort of correction or discipline. So maybe stepping in the leash when the dog jumps up and self-correcting the dog, telling the dog off, doing a lot of like negative punishment by removing your attention to the dog. And when the dog sits, then you reward them. Um, that's all like rainbows and butterflies guys. Like you guys know, I talk about a lot. There's a lot of videos floating around with people just saying, just ignore your dog until they act good. And then you just give them attention when they do. That would be awesome in a realistic uh, situation. You know, if you didn't have an out of control, crazy dog, literally scraping your back up and making you bleed all over the place. Yeah. Um, I train for reality as you guys know. So for me, it's really just about I don't want my dog to think that that's okay to do, and I don't want my dog to think that's appropriate to do to, to my friends, family, uh, people who are coming over. So just making sure that you're being assertive and correcting the dog when they do those things and marking it. So a lot of questions rolling in, guys. I appreciate it very much. If you guys are just getting here, uh, don't forget to, to like this video. We have almost 200 people in here. Uh, if you guys just hit that like button for me, and then I'm going to keep rolling on these questions. All right. Um, how do I how do I get my dogs to stop pulling on the leash? You have to teach them heal. Uh, there's no dogs aren't robots or computers. You can't go in and just delete something. Stop pulling. You can't turn that switch off unless you teach them something else to do. So you have to make sure that your dog knows heal. It's it's not a it's not an easy thing to accomplish by teaching an animal that you live with that has four legs to walk nicely on a leash, but it's something that you have to spend the time and the effort to go in and teach them how to walk nicely on a leash. I have I have hundreds of videos on that. Uh, I would suggest just looking through some of my playlists on that. Uh, when is the muzzle use appropriate? It's a good question, Tammy. Muzzle use for me, guys, is is something that I I think more people should be doing. It's a safe. Um, it's a safe thing. Uh, it's, a, it's just like teaching the dog that the muzzle is okay and you're doing it positively and it's, it's great for the dog to understand that the muzzle is a good thing. And I think more importantly, I think the more muzzles that we use, the more society accepts them. Because, you know, when I was in Europe um, uh, last year, there was a lot of muzzle wearing simply because they didn't want dogs to eat all the junk off the floor. And it was just like a very like organic thing and nobody really thought anything twice about it. And here in the States, I think when, when people... Uh, when people wear muzzles, we just assume that they're aggressive. So you just start muzzle training. If you feel like your dog is insecure or nervous or is going to have behavioral issues in the future, the earlier you start that muzzle training with a little bit of peanut butter, making that stuff positive is, is a great thing. And again, I just want to say thank you guys so much for joining me. Uh, I'm answering your dog training questions as my sign of uh, gratitude and appreciation for you guys. Um, and we may do this.
couple times a week if you guys want. All right. Um, what is the best way to get my dog to come and sit right in front of me as close as possible and look right at me? Well, that's something that you have to teach in sequence. So in traditional uh, dog training or classical dog training, that would be like a here command or a front command. Um, so a lot of times what you do is you just set up like you teach the dog how to touch on a pad like this. So you teach them how to touch on a touch pad. And then when you recall them, you'll recall them straight to you. And when they come to you, you'll finish it with that touch. So the first thing you do is put that touch in front of you and teach the dog with a leash on how to get the dog to touch on the touch pad. Boom, boom, good touch, boom, boom, good touch. Spend a couple days doing that. Put the touch pad in front of you and then recall. And then obviously recall is a separate command. So then you bridge those two together, teaching the dog to recall. And when they come to you, they will obviously then say, you say touch and then you put, they put their two front feet right on the touch pad. So um, that's how I would do that. It just takes a little bit of time, but if you do the recall and the touch separately and then you combine them, you'll be in business. <clears throat> My dog is super reactive towards bikes, skateboards, scooters, etc. No biting, but lots of barking and lunging. Any tips? Um, got a Herm Springer from your site. Cool. Yeah, so that's the first place to start is just work on the leave it command. And then I think also too, just understanding that, that those wheels and stuff is a, is a prey drive. So if your dog is into those moving things, chances are the breed is very pre, prey driven and wants the opportunity to go and uh, chase those things because they think it's fun. So there's nothing wrong with that. I just, you got to teach your dog that that's, that's inappropriate behavior. And the way to do that is just by correcting them. Um, so that's, you've, look, sounds like you've already done, sorry, I'm just turning my fan on here. Sounds like you guys have already you've already done that uh, preliminary work to get the dog to get the dog out and you've got your correction collar. So now you just have to desensitize it over time. So I would expose your dog to those things, skateboards, bikes, etc., and then use positive reinforcement. Just be very balanced about it. So um, you're going to start saying, leave it when the dog reacts to those things. You're going to physically or verbally correct the dog. And then once the skateboard or bike goes past and they just watch it, then you pay them. So you just teach them that way. Uh, my dog's recall is good with rewards, but when I call her outside, she is distracted. She doesn't come tips. Uh, yep. That's a great question. I, I have another video on that too, but, um, you know, for me guys, as you guys know, I've trained so many different ways and I've already said that once in this live. And I, I, am I, I said this in my, one of my videos recently with my e-collar training video with the puppy, uh, which is the thumbnail of this video, my, my boy Louie. Um, I'm not naive to animals' primal behavior. I know that they're animals. I know that they're dogs. And when I ask them to come to me and they decide that something else is more important, uh, I know that that's, that's going to happen because that's, that's exactly like you know how things work in the animal kingdom is they're very selective hearing. So you just have to make sure you can enforce your verbals, just like with, with kids. If you say, hey, my kid only listens to me when it's beneficial for them, well then, obviously you've got to make some sort of consequences if they don't comply. I think the moral of this, this story that we're talking about with the recall without food is making sure that you're able to, uh, the dog fully understands what you're asking them to do. So that's like the biggest thing, is just making sure that the dog really, really understands that when you recall, they're like, oh, I know what that is. And then if they don't, you can get a 30 foot long line and then pop. One of my most recent videos, I think my most recent video is uh, how I recall all of my dogs off leash uh, would be a great guidance for, for you in, in doing that. What does it mean if your dog is reactive? Um, it's, a, it's a good question. I think reactivity is, is basically two things coming together to create another thing. So it's different from aggression. It's different from uh, you know real, real, real aggression and, and the dog being inherently like mean. Reactivity means you have Mentos and Coca-Cola. Separately, that's all they are. If you bring them together, they react. So if you have a dog on the leash and then you have another dog on the leash and there's a reaction, that's what reactivity means. You have two things equaling a reaction, in my opinion. Um... Uh, Maddie, I'm trying to answer your question here. So quick question. In the conditioning phase, we found that our, our dog's number when he responds to it, but it's in some cases he feels it and ignores it. Any suggestions? Um, great question. I'm assuming you're talking about the e-collar. I would just make sure that the e-collar is tight enough for, for so you have um, really continuous 
uh, ability and, and consecutive um, abilities to, to recall the dog and make sure that it's tight enough so the dog feels it. I can't tell you how many times that the equipment literally just isn't on quite well and the dog just ignores it for that reason. Um, so I have a video that I would recommend on what to do if your dog doesn't come back. Uh, it's with a German Shepherd when I was training out in Michigan and I teach people how, when and how to go up on the remote collar because it's something I, I don't have a great deal of opportunity to talk about in, in my videos. Um, cool. I also wanted to say, um, I'm, uh, we just confirmed up a, a venue in the UK, um, for me to go to the UK and we're going to do some training in the UK. So it's, um, I believe it's right outside of London. And so I'm really excited about that. Um, I forgot to mention that in the beginning I was, I was going to, but, um, for anybody out there that's in the UK, um, we are going to make a trip to the UK and do a seminar. Uh, we're going to spend about a week there and we're going to be training. Um, so it's really exciting. I'm really grateful uh, that that's an opportunity. Uh, and we're thinking about doing that in the spring once COVID allows us to um, travel. So just wanted to let you guys know that, uh, that I am going to be going to the UK to do a seminar, which I'm really excited about. Um, my dog goes crazy when fireworks go off and thunderstorms so bad he goes to the bathroom in the house. How can I help him? Um, well, when you're dealing with fireworks and you're dealing with um, things that you can't control, thunderstorms, that's a very like natural thing for a dog to go and seek shelter. So um, it's really tough. Um, the best thing to do is to just kind of drown that noise out, lots of exercise. And honestly, you know, I'm really big about making your life as less stressful as possible. So the best thing to do is, is to just make sure that if you can, if you have the opportunity when fireworks are going to go off during holidays or something, to just, just literally remove your dog from the situation. And if you can't, try to drown those noises out as much as possible. There's also uh, like the stress vest things. I can't remember what they're called, but if you guys leave them in the comments, I'm sure you guys know what I'm talking about. <clears throat> and then the other thing is, is uh, CBD really helps a lot too for my dogs, I've found. Madeline, or Madeline, sorry, I don't know which one that is. Our trainer is against e-collars and shock collars because he thinks they're the same and is uneducated about them and our dogs need the e-collar for leash. Any tips? Wow, that's a really great question. Um, yeah, I think, you know, over the next 200 years, we're going to be constantly trying to educate people on uh, the safe and humane usage of technology of the remote collar. Um, it's something that, you know, we've been working on and, and I'm grateful for the opportunity to like be able to put content out to teach people about these remote collars. And I know that you guys have had some good feedback and we get messages all the time from people saying that, um, you know, the e-collar has helped them and saved their, save their life, saved their relationship and they didn't know anything about them the differences. So the best thing to do is to just send that individual if they're open. A lot of dog trainers are not open to new information, which is unfortunate. Um, so the best thing to do is maybe send them some information, maybe a video that I've put out or somebody else that's put out um, of like, hey, I just want I just want to show you what this is and what it can be. Um, Thunder shirts. That's it. Thank you, BJC. Um, but yeah, I think that that's like the best thing to do. And then the other thing is, is you have to realize that you are a client, like you are paying for your trainer. They need your services just as much as you need their services. And if it's something that they're not willing to open up to and you truly believe that that's something that you really want to get done uh, and happens to us all the time, like we, we have trainers or we have people come from trainers from all over and they just said that they're not open to do different things that they think that they need. Um, and so the best thing to do is to just um, you know end that relationship with that trainer and maybe get another trainer in your area. It's the best thing to do. Um, <clears throat> um, how do I get an extremely fearful skittish dog on the leash she's terrified of everything and hates it when she feels someone has control over her she doesn't bite in fear but she goes just limp um, Amanda that's a good question honestly to be honest I well honestly to be honest I um patience is the name of that game uh, just being super patient the video that I I refer to a lot of the videos that I do because it's like I can just say, hey, watch this video because it's exactly dealing with that. Um, the video that I recently did with the hound dog um, is is like really, really up your alley with that. I think it was my I think it was my latest video um, where the dog shut down every time that we went into like a different room of training 
he'd shut down and I'd pull and he'd shut down. He ended up like choking himself. I'm like, all right. So then I switched to the prong collar and it literally changed everything. Um, and I've done that multiple different times with the prong collar with those dogs who shut down because what happens is, is those, those points of pressure come up even, I mean, I'm not, I'm not exaggerating. I'm not just saying this literally this dog would shut down, shut down, shut down, shut down, try to like, and then I was like, okay, I don't want to like choke this dog put the prong collar on and then literally I just gave it a little pop and the dog went boop and then popped right forward like that. No joke. So um, watch that video and then make sure that if you go that route that um, the prong collars just fit properly. You don't want anything too big unless it won't work. You'll be in the same boat. This is so fun. Hope you guys are having fun. If you guys are here, don't forget to like this video. Um, I'm going to take some water while you guys do that. You guys want to see my cat? This is my cat Pip. Sometimes I call him Pipperoon, Pipperoni. He's usually right up in my face. He's a troublemaker, aren't you, buddy? Um. All right, let's get into it. My nine-month-old Dave, probably Dane, is super reactive to strangers. What's or maybe your dog's name is Dave? <laughs> What's the best training to help? Um. Again, I would uh. I don't want to waste anybody's time here. Time is uh, valuable, especially here on a Sunday. Appreciate you guys. Um, but I have, a, I have, I think over a hundred videos on on leash reactivity. I would, I would definitely just, just try to look at that. Um, uh, big bearded Mike. I rescued an abused pit bull, but he's scared of me. How do I let him know he's safe with me? Great question. If you have a dog that is fearful of even you, uh, I would, um, I would go and just work with that dog, very organically. So the best thing to do is. Just go for a walk. Try to get that dog out and go for a walk. Every single dog loves a good walk. Um, so just bring that dog out and go for a walk and, and try to enjoy each other's time. So uh, training is not important right now. Relationship building is. So just go out and just try to do everyday stuff with the dog to build that relationship and build that trust. And then try to get in to do some, uh, some obedi obedience training after that. Maybe like a place command or, you know, whatever. Um... Structured walks have been the best thing for my reactive dog. Yes, I would agree. Uh, does neutering a small dog help aggression? Not, not really. Um, it's not going to take it away if that's the question. No, it's not. Um, can a dog know? Can a dog know which person to take advantage of? Yes, the answer is absolutely. It's just like with kids, if mom is more this way and dad is more this way, or vice versa. The dog, absolutely. I can't tell you how many times that happens in training sessions. And you guys may have seen it on my videos where I hand the leash off to one owner and then the dog acts a certain way and I hand it off to the other owner, the dog acts a certain way. Again, uh, I'm going to do a giveaway at the end of this video. Um, so if you guys want to hang out and keep hanging out with me as I answer questions, I appreciate it. You guys, like I said, time is valuable. You guys are from all over the world and uh, on your Sunday and you're hanging out with me. I appreciate that very much. It's very cool. I'm grateful for it. Um... How would you use a small prong collar on a small dog? Just get very, very small prongs, that's all. It's easy. Um, hi, David. How are you? Uh, Husky th Sam asks, Husky throws a royal tantrum on the leash and any aversion. Self-correct with prong collar, ignores e-collar, GSD, help. <laughs> um, yeah. You got a husky, that's what they do. That's like, that is their MO. Uh, the huskies are like really tough dogs to work with. Actually, if, if you guys have listened to any podcast or any interview about that, it's, uh, it's the huskies are the, the hardest breeds to train. Huskies and Great Danes, they're just not built for obedience. They're not built for wanting to do things with people. They're like working dogs. They'd rather live outside and do nothing, but they're beautiful, so people buy the crap out of them. Um, thank you, Jason. I appreciate that, brother. But when you're working with a husky, the best thing to do is normally, historically, what happens is is dogs, dog owners will literally just have a conversation with their dogs. So when you're moving forward and you want to go do something with your dog, the best thing to do is to just use your momentum, look that way, and move forward. A lot of times what people do is they sit there and they have a conversation. Come on, come on, come on. And that's a conversation. Don't, don't, don't make it be a conversation. You just move. So turn your shoulders, go that way, and just pop. The other thing I would recommend is get yourself a long line. Get yourself a long line. If you're using a prong collar, that's the best. Pop, 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 and just, just, just move the dog along. I've never had a dog not respond to that sequence, so I would just assume that 
making sure your prong collars fit properly, get yourself a 30 foot long line, pop the dog forward and don't have a conversation about it. <clears throat> um, when and what should you teach a new puppy when you get it eight weeks old? It's a great question, Jessica. I personally, like with my dogs, I teach a lot of relationship building games. Uh, I, teach, I teach a lot of uh, engagement games. So you guys always ask me with my dog, Lakota, um, how, do you get, how do you get your dogs uh, to look at you all the time? And that's something I teach at a very early age. So obviously an eight, eight week old puppy is gonna be food motivated more than likely. So I'd get yourself like some soft treats, like uh, we use Happy Howie's or you can use Stewart's Pro Treats. You're welcome, Sam. And you can get the dog to work that way. And so what I do, as I work on a focus command first, so I don't really necessarily do like any cues yet or any any like verbal cues. I just work on relationship. So what I'll do is I'll get the dog to focus on me. I'll pay the dog and pay the dog for engagement, and then I'll put the food in the bowl. I'll move it over this way, like if I put the bowl this way, and then I, I and then as soon as the dog looks at me, I then pay the dog that way. So I'm looking on I'm working on engagement first. Um, Threshold stuff, so if you want to get like a little slip collar or a slip leash, you certainly can, which is like this. And you can just put it on a puppy and just teach leash pressure, uh, thresholds, walking in and out of the doorways, um, things like that. Totally cool. Um, but I, I work on relationship first, especially with a new puppy. You guys don't have the opportunity to see me uh, work with dogs with no behavioral issues much. Um, so all of the dogs that I primarily work with, especially that I put out here on YouTube, are, are behavior modification cases. So... Um, relationship sometimes goes out the window immediately because I got to worry about the dog trying to hurt me. So anyway, it's a great question. Um, <clears throat> when should you stop using food for train a puppy? I have a video on that. It's called get your dog to listen to you anywhere or something like that. Um, I go over that entire process. My dog was abused and with a prong and now shuts down. I'm at a loss. Any tips? Um, yeah, that sucks. You know, and that's, that's the, that's the problem with, with tools is people can abuse them easier unfortunately. Um, so just don't use it, just use a slip and then use lots of, chances are your dog's going to be just um, scared of everything at that point. So I would just uh, thank you very much guys for all these questions by the way, but I would just go over to a slip collar and, and, and use that maybe and just make it a very positive thing. Um, Diana, Debbie, thank you guys. Um, help. When meeting new dogs, everything is fine until they try to snap and smell her butt, but she snaps at them. What, what can I do to help? Sometimes dogs just aren't that social. Sometimes dogs aren't that confident. Sometimes dogs don't like other dogs uh, approaching them, and that's okay. And I think you have to like make that distinction of, is your dog being like really bratty, or is your dog actually not comfortable with other dogs coming into their personal space? So I would say, um, you know, definitely if you're in an environment that the dog doesn't know well, um, go for a walk together and I wouldn't, I wouldn't suggest dog parks. It's way too much stimulation. It's way overload. So if you have just one other dog and they're trying to get to know each other, have them get to know each other. Uh, obviously your dog doesn't like that, like confrontation and all of that conflict right at first. So I would just go for a walk to get them to know each other a little bit more. Yes, I believe in using muzzles. I use them all the time. Thank you for liking my videos. I appreciate that. Um, uh, let's see. My 10 month old golden doodle shows no aggression, but is extremely anxious with new people or when I leave her with anyone, she growls at new people. Well, Kelsey, um, you know, that's, that's something that you're going to have to work on. I think, I think the most important thing that I've seen from this is dog owners talking to their dogs way too, too, too much. So there's a lot of confusion. So the dog is insecure. Almost every single dog that I've, um, not almost every, I would say the majority of dogs that I work with that are insecure, have anxious issues are usually because the owners have made them that way. And the, one of the biggest things is um, dog owners talking to their dogs way too much. So right from the get-go, the dog owner just treats their dog like some sort of uh, child and confuses the dog right off the rip. Talk, 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 every day. Talk, 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 every single day. And then by the third or fourth day, your dog is home with you. Your dog does not respond to you. Your dog does not look at you for direction. Your dog does not care about what you have to say because you've talked so much to the dog and your dog is not gonna go for you for information. So a lot of times when, when dogs and puppies are this at that age and they don't like other people, it's because they have very, very, very low um, confidence in themselves as well as insecurity issues. So I'd really check and audit your relationship first before you dive into what do I do about my dog not uh, being confident with other people. I would check your relationship first. Ashley asks, hi, 
how do I control my dog from not barking every time he sees another dog? Um, I have a bunch of videos on reactivity, but the most important thing is, is teaching your dog what not to do. Again, dogs aren't robots. We can't go in and flick them off and say, hey, let's, let's, let me just get in there. Oh yeah, I'll turn that off for you. Anything else you want me to turn off? doesn't work like that. You gotta spend the time to understand why your dog is reacting, and then you have to spend the time on how to condition your dog or counter condition your dog to not do the things that you want them to do. So patience, spend the time to learn on what you should be doing. <clears throat> if I booked a weekend workshop with you at the facility, what would we expect? I would email us about that. That's kind of a long process. <clears throat> Thanks, Cynthia. She says, this is great. Awesome. I'm glad you guys are enjoying this. Uh, is there an age when a dog is too old or too late to train? No, not necessarily. It just takes a little bit more. Um, too early? No. There's, no, there's never too early to, to train. I always say, when people ask me, what's the best age to train? Now. Now is the best age to train. And if they're older, you just got to spend a little bit more time and just have a little bit more patience. Um, is the Belgian Malinois more obedient than the Dutch Shepherd? They're literally this pretty much the same dog, so I wouldn't say one way or the other. Um, thank you so much, JH99. Um, if you guys like this uh, live stuff, let me know in the comments below, even if you aren't ans asking questions, because I'm thinking about doing this maybe once a week. And then there's also this thing called Super Chat that I was interested in where you guys can support me by donating money and, and helping me like go full time doing YouTube and doing more of this because I would do more of this um, if you guys you know wanted to see it. Um, so anyway, let me know if you guys are liking this. Um, ba -ba 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 thank you, thank you, thank you, guys. Thank you. My four-month-old GSD goes nuts when she sees our cat crying, barking, shaking, drooling. Do you have any tips? Um, well, that sounds like a prey drive, so a uh, cat and mouse type game. So the dog says, hey, there's a there's a cat, um, and so you got to be careful, obviously, for the cat's uh, safety that the dog doesn't, um, you know, go after your cat and try to kill it like a, like a rag doll because that's kind of what happens. So I would be doing a lot of um, muzzle training at that point. Uh, no, no, Janelle, it's not Patreon. Uh, Super Chat is, is actually built right into YouTube, so you guys are able to like buy different things like $2, $1, $20, $100, or whatever, and it, it's fun. It's a lot of fun. Um, I'm going to look into that, but I was just researching that uh, yesterday. It looks cool. Um, is it, ooh, this is a good question, Will. Is it cruel to keep your dog from meeting company if they're sitting but crying like a madman? <laughs> um, I don't think it's cruel. I think that it's, it's appropriate because your dog isn't in the right state of mind to meet uh, new people. So I, I, think, I think that I would say that it's not cruel. You just have to make sure that the, own, or the other people aren't making it cruel. I think the cruel thing would be them going like, hey buddy, I wanna pet you, but I can't because um, your owner won't let you. So you just have to make sure that it's, it's, it's humane for your, for your dog. So you just have to make sure that the other people aren't egging your dog on. <clears throat> um. Diana asked, what's the best way to introduce e collar to a puppy? What age? I've already answered that, Diana. Um, but I have a video that I recently posted on how I get all my dogs off leash that I would suggest that with a puppy uh, Labrador. Um, how to uh, When's the best way to introduce a prong collar? I talk about this all the time on my podcast. But as long as the dog understands how to turn things off and, un and understands the information you're providing them, the prong collar is one of the safest tools you could possibly use because it doesn't damage the dog's throat like many other collars. And it also gives you the opportunity to um, correct the dog uh, humanely, effectively, and efficiently. So you don't have to correct the dog over and over again in the future. So a lot of people go, heal, 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 sit, 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 sit. Um, doesn't work like that. That that's a really good way to relationship uh, break your relationship. Um, when expecting a dog to heal on a walk, how do you know when they're needing potty versus other resistance? It's a great question. I would just make sure that you're working on the break command. The break command is invaluable to your training toolbox. The break command basically tells the dog and utilizes the ability to say, "Hey, you're free. Go do what you want." So making sure if you're out working your dog on a heel, that you're also uh, able to then tell the dog break and get them to do what they want. It's a great question. Um, my St. Bernard was attacked by another dog and now she's aggressive towards other dogs. Any tips? Um, yeah, I would just do the best you can to make that a positive experience in the future. So going out and getting around other dogs, um, and, and using lots of positive reinforcement. So, re you know, reward based systems to, to, but I think the most important thing is, is just getting around the right dogs. I don't think it's appropriate for you to like put another dog right next to your dog. But I think if you go to, um, like a group class or something where there's other dogs that are controlled, I think that that would be a good idea. <clears throat> 
I'm going to take a sip of this. If you guys are here, we have almost 300 people in this chat, which I think is like the biggest that we've had ever here on YouTube. So I appreciate you guys so much. If you're, if you're here and you haven't yet, don't forget to like this video. Uh, and I'm going to do some more uh, answering in a minute. Also, too, um, again, I'm going to do a giveaway at the end of this video, and if you guys haven't heard, uh, I'm going to be in the, doing a seminar in the UK in the spring, and what we're going to do with that is we're going to open it up. I think we're only going to do like eight working spots, um, so it's going to be very limited spots to work, but it's going to be unlimited audits, so you guys can come and hang out, and uh, we can meet, and uh, you know, we can do a QA. and a um, and we're going to film, so a lot of it's going to be on the on the uh, YouTube, so it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, so we're going to be doing that in the UK in the spring, hopefully, once COVID kind of goes down. So um, I would say that, uh, <clears throat> hey, Tammy, thanks for joining. Uh, I would say that in this, uh, we're going to open that up, uh, and we'll let, we'll let everybody know via social media. So hi from Portugal. A friend of mine has a small corgi mix that's literally afraid of everything and fear-based aggression. She also knows making territory inside the house. What should we do? Uh, it's a good question. I would just go out and just make things more enjoyable. I mean, I know that that sounds cliche, but um, one of the best things you can do with a dog that's fearful is show them that life isn't as uh, as fearful as it, as it is. Um, so going out and doing you know things with your dog is the most important thing um, and making it positive but being a good leader. So uh, let's see. Yeah, whoa, 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 whoa. Big Bearded Mike, it's 4 a.m. where you're at on Monday morning. You're a savage. Thank you, guys. Stephanie. Um, okay. I have a six-month-old German Shepherd who's still puppy biting. He only does it when I sit down. It does hurt, but still annoying. Any tips? Most important thing is is just you know correcting the dog. So what I do is I just take their 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 uh, all their fluff on the back and I just kind of pull them away. Um, what you don't want to do is you don't want to react. So you don't want to do this. You don't want to pull your hands away because it becomes very prime you know primal. Um, uh, I, I don't know. So that's that's like the that's like the process that I that I do is I don't let dogs uh, I don't let dogs do that. I don't let dogs like chase my stuff. Um, so you just have to make sure you're correcting it and uh, not reacting. <clears throat> starting with Casey Dogs with Mike. Uh, he taught me, nope, I've never met Mike. Uh, I've worked, uh, I, I referred uh, a couple clients to him though in Kansas City. Um, have you ever dealt with a case of, I don't even know what that is, aggression. Um, hey Tom, you're in a great, thank you for all you do. Peace from the UK. Hopefully I meet you in the UK. Hopefully you can come hang out. When I come in the spring, it's going to be a lot of fun. Would you consider prolonging your visit in Europe, including other countries and visit UK? Um, we would. Um, we're going to like take it slow. You know, we're like a band that's like you know gaining, uh, gaining uh, popularity in other places, and we get a lot of. Um, the reason why we're going to the UK is I have some clients that are uh, helping me get a place and uh, helping me get a venue, and so we're going to go and try to like help as many people as we can because we get a lot. A lot, a lot of people inquiring from the UK. So we're going to go over to the UK and help as many people out as we possibly can. It's going to be a lot of fun. I can't wait to meet you guys. <clears throat> um, how can I work on engagement with a dog who hasn't found food motivated? Um, tug toys, play toys. So get some squeakers, get some squeaker toys out, get something that's fluffy that's out. Um, and we just hit over 300 people in here. So thank you guys so much. I appreciate you guys so much for watching. Uh, and again, we're going to do a giveaway soon. Uh, I'm just going to answer some, some more questions here. Um, thank you so much, Maria. I appreciate it. Um, if your dog bites kids, so that, that comment keeps coming in, if your dog bites kids, you just have to correct it and make sure your dog is staying away from kids. And I would suggest if it's serious, I would find a trainer yourself. My eight-month-old Great Pyrenees German Shepherd mix eats everything he finds. Um, <clears throat> uh, yeah, so, you know, the first thing that I suggest pe to people when uh, when they – when you find something uh, that that your or your dog finds everything that they're trying to eat, the best thing to do is just like really uh, re-audit your diet. If your dog is constantly trying to ingest other things, chances are they may have some sort of uh, problem if they're not getting what they want or deficiency. Um, Lori, how will you adjust the prong in the UK? Uh, just like I do here in the states. Uh, my anxious GSD goes nuts chasing, barking, running uh, dogs over the dog park only when I take him with younger dogs. Um, I, you know, uh, Gene, dog parks are really a terrible place for dogs to gain socialization because it, it creates a lot of bullying, a lot of traumatization. Um, it's not a great place. And, and I always tell people that the dog park is, um, 
the dog park is uh is 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 a place that's gonna co- it's gonna cause something something's gonna happen it's not a matter of when it's a matter of or no it's not a matter of if it's a matter of when um so anyway that's the first thing i would say um yeah yeah no problem no problem um how to keep our our corso from going after our cats well again cat and cat and mouse game guys um you just have to make sure that you know you're you're doing the right thing by uh training your dog off leash if it's going to be something that's not going to go away because it's not going to be safe for your cat and it's not going to be fair to your cat and it may not even be fair to your dog to have him in the same house if you don't have the ultimate control um what's the best way to socialize dog with other dogs if the park if the park isn't a good place it's a great question james don't don't feel defeated um you just have to you know friends and family and, and you also have to remember too that like some dogs aren't aren't likely to be friends with other dogs. They don't really care to be friends with other dogs. They don't care about that. Dogs are animals and they have enough friends for the most part. Um, so just, if you're, if you're trying to socialize with your dog, the best thing to do is maybe, um, like what we do is we, we suggest for people to just like friends and family that have dogs that you know, that have their shots and aren't aggressive and aren't gonna tear into your dog. Um, or, you know, people in the neighborhood, your neighbors, your community. I wouldn't just go to a dog park and just let your dog in because it's just, it's very overwhelming for a lot of dogs and then it can create a lot of um, things in the future. That's uh, it's not good. Um, what about doggy daycares? Those are good. Doggy daycares are good. We have one. Um, some dogs like them and some dogs don't. So you just have to make sure you find a good doggy daycare that is honest with you. We have a waiting list on our doggy daycare. So like if a dog doesn't like it and if they're not having the time of their life, we just simply tell their owners, hey, this isn't for them. Maybe go find a dog walker and we, we try to get another dog in that's going to love it. Um, some doggy daycares, that's right. Um, I work in a doggy daycare. Cool, that's awesome, Haley. All right, cool. And then I'm going to answer some more questions here. Tom, my blue healer was fear aggressive. Would you recommend a prong collar or e-collar? Um, yeah, sure. I mean, it doesn't, I mean, I don't want to say it doesn't matter what you use, but you just have to make sure that the, the dog is understanding what you're asking. So you can't just like put something on a dog and, and just assume that, you know, like everything's going to go away. You have to teach them. And so those are tools to enforce what you're trying to teach. It comes from you. Um, the collars and the tools that we use are just like a product. You, you have to, So if we have a screwdriver and we have a screw going into the wood, I'm the one that has to put the, the screwdriver. We just don't say, hey, here's a screwdriver. Do your work. You, you are the tool. You have to use that tool in order for it to work properly. So yes, I would suggest those things. I've had a lot of success with using the prong collar and the e-collar in a lot of different things. Um, I do take advantage of technology advancements. And um, you know, as you guys know, my training methods are based off of things that work and experience and results. That's, I'm a big person on results. If it works, great. Um, and I've used almost every single training style there has been over the last 13 years. And that's like the most effective way. When I opened up my training facility, it was a very organic thing. I did a uh, podcast with a couple people uh, and it's called the Dog Trainers Podcast. And I go over my entire career of where I was, how I started, why I started using tools. You guys can find that on iTunes at um, Dog Trainers Podcast and it kind of goes over everything. So I would just, sorry, this little rant there. Come to Singing Pour. I'd love to. We're trying to collect as many people as we can. That's why I love going live and meeting you guys. And um, is anybody in here from, if you guys are from the UK, uh, I want you guys to comment down below and let me know. And then again, uh, we're going to do a giveaway here in a little bit. <clears throat> Thank you for liking my podcast. I appreciate that. Um, what do I look for in a dog trainer? Um, clarity, uh, transparency, things that make sense. Um, you know, we get a lot of people that come into our facility that have worked with other trainers and they just say, cause we always say, you know, why didn't it work or something or whatever. And they just say, it just doesn't make sense. The training that they're doing doesn't make sense. Um, so it just, it has to make sense. I would make sure that you, you, you it makes sense. It makes sense for you. Um, so that's the best thing, you know, obviously looking at reviews, um, social media now is great. So if you can, if you can see people working with dogs and having good results and having reviews and, and watching things, that's always a good thing to do too when you're looking for a trainer. Um, cool. Awesome. Lucy, that would be awesome if you can go from Scotland uh, to London. Yeah, we're going to go right outside of London and we're going to do a two-day seminar and uh, I hope to meet everybody and I want to do a Q&A and we're even thinking about doing like drinks or something after so we can all hang out because, uh, you know, coming from here to there, uh, it's going to be, it's going to be cool. I'm really excited about that. Um, <clears throat> From the UK, yay, Michelle. What dogs do you own uh, that will 
and what was your first dog? Uh, Lola is was like my real first dog of mine, and she is here still. So she's about 17 years old. And then I have a Dutch Shepherd, Lakota. Um, you guys have probably seen her. She's a little black dog in my videos. And then I have Saint, my St. Bernard Thompson. Um, so he's he's an 11-year-old St. Bernard. Cool. Hi, Tom. I'm getting a GSD. How soon can I teach him to do protection without getting an e-call? You don't have to have an e-call at all to do protection. You can do protection right when you get your dog to start building drive. Just make sure you find uh, the right trainer. Uh, my dog does not listen to the e-collar. Uh, well, you probably have the wrong e-collar. You're not doing it right. Um, that's not, again, <laughs> you guys, like tools aren't these things that you're like, put it on. You're like, work. You have to work it. If you don't know what you're doing and you don't spend time with a professional introducing these tools, they won't work. So yeah, your dog won't listen to the e-collar unless you do it right. Hello from India. My five-month-old German Shepherd puppy gets daily exercise of two hours. That's great, but still randomly barks at nothing for quite some time. So what could be the reason? Not sure. Um, you know, that could be like a neurological thing. It could be your dog is bratty, so making sure you're not reacting to that barking. Um, so if a dog barks, just like conditioning, guys, like so if we teach a dog to do something and then we pay them with something, the, they're going to be encouraged to do it in the future. So you just have to make sure that when you're teaching your dog stuff or when you're working with your dog that – if they're barking, you're not looking at the dog. So if your dog barks, you go, what's the matter? What are you barking for? Stop barking, blah, blah, blah. Like, don't do that because you're giving in. So the best thing to do with your dogs randomly barking is, um, especially if they're getting enough exercise, which they are, is make sure that you're not feeding into that. Um, okay, is it normal for a nine-week-old Australian shepherd to lunge and bite when he is on the leash? No, that's not normal. Um, but he's a nine-week-old dog, so he doesn't know anything well. So you have to make sure you're the, you're the parent. You are the parent. You are the person in charge. You're the person that's going to sculpt and mold and develop this dog for what they're going to be in the future. If he's doing it at nine weeks, I'd hate to see what he does at nine months. So just make sure that you take, take charge of the, the situation and you're, you're able to, to correct the dog. Um, how long did it take you to train Lakota? Uh, Roman, that's a good question. If you actually look back, me and, me and my other trainers looked back at Lakota's first uh, training sessions, which you guys can find in my earlier videos. She was nine weeks old when she basically, everything that she does now, she was doing at like 12 weeks old. Uh, so down, focused healing, place, sit down, all that stuff. She was doing at, at, at really young. She was doing focused healing off leash at nine weeks old. Um, why does my dog just sit there and stare at me? I have no idea. How do I get a German Shepherd puppy to want to play fetch? Uh, you got to make it fun. So put put a long line on a fe on a on a tug toy, so something that has a tug. And what I do is I just throw the long line out, and the dog goes and chase it, and then I bring it back. So I build frustration. The other thing you can do is get a prey pole. Go to Amazon and 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 type in uh, like flirt pole or prey pole for dogs, and you'll find like basically a cat toy for dogs. And then you're able to to get the dog, uh, you know, really into those types of things. Are corrections good for puppies? Yes, but like. You have to realize that correct. I think a lot of people don't understand punishment and corrections doesn't mean pain. It doesn't mean like, you know, throw all these equipment. Correcting a dog is what's going to keep them safe. I made a video on that recently with a hound dog uh, about like if you don't if you don't get respect and you don't get um, engagement from your dog, it's life or death. So if you care about your dog, train your dog, make sure they respect you. Norway, what's up? <clears throat> we got a pup from a breeder and we feel like she's scared of us touching her. How can we fix this? We give her lots of cuddles. Well, I mean, if you're giving her lots of cuddles, that could scare her. So if your dog was literally, you know, a dog and a puppy, if you're giving her lots of cuddles, that's very overwhelming. Like you got to realize that your dog is an animal. So you have to respect your animal and don't overdo it. So if you get a new dog that really isn't used to being handled by a lot of people for whatever reason, and you're just cuddling this dog like nobody's business, that's going to be that's gonna be scary. I would suggest, uh, take this the right way, I hope. Treat your dog like a dog, and you'll, you'll, you'll have a happier life with your dog. The more you coddle and treat your dog like a baby, and you talk to your dog, and you say, I love you, and you're sweet, and you're cute, and what's wrong, that's the best way to ruin your relationship with your dog at an early age, period. If I wrote a book, it would be those three sentences. <clears throat> Why does my dog howl and bark and lunge when she sees strange other dogs? Why won't she pay attention to me that during that time? <clears throat> you got to teach again. You got to teach your dog what to do. You got to teach your dog how to how to how to build a relationship with you. What is leave it? What is heal? What is focus? Again, dogs aren't computers or robots. You can't go in and 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 do this and just turn everything off. You have to make sure that your dog is understanding what you're supposed to be doing. <clears throat> 
Uh, bah, 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 bah. How can I help stray animals that are scared or aggressive? I'm trying to help the poor little guys out. Um, I think food. I mean, if you get a stray animal, food is the best thing. I mean, if you're trying to like take them away from their situation and provide something better for them, you can uh, set up like a trap, trap them and then remove them from the situation so they can live a better life. Um, Rebecca, that's a good question. Can you correct your dog 30 minutes after she pees in the house? Will she understand that she's getting corrected for peeing? Is it too late? Blah, blah, blah. Hi from Israel. Thank you so much, Rebecca. I appreciate that. Um, it's tough. Like when a dog pees, like you can tell them bad. And the thing is, is they're going to cower and they're going to say, I know I've done something bad, but a lot of times they don't like match the two up. So if you're potty training, keep your dog isolated. That's why we do like a lot of potty training in the crate. Um, and we do a lot of potty training in like a, an X pen and an area that we can watch the dog so we can punish them if we need to. And it doesn't give them the option to roam the house to, to cause an accident. So you don't find it an hour or 30 minutes later. So you can't correct it. Um, so that's my best advice for that. Um, hi from Sweden. Hi, Jessica. How are you? My German shepherd, six years old. We are, we have trained with positive training since, and we are eight weeks old. We have never had any problems. We competed in tracking and obedience. Awesome. Very glad to hear. Good for you. Um, Danielle ask or Danielle, sorry, Roddy GSD mix best strategy for using using the e-collar to stop him from barking and strangers coming into the house. Again, guys, like you you have to teach your dog what you want them to do. The, the e-collar is just an enforcer. So again, screwdriver, screw, wood. You, you have to use that tool in order to do it. You just have to make sure that you're teaching the dog what leave it means, teaching the dog what uh, heel means and all that stuff. And the, the, the collars and the equipment they're using is just an enforcer. I, I think that that's where everyone gets like the situation confused is it's just an enforcer. It's not, you know, this thing that you just put on and it just, what's up, Lisa? Um, let's see. Whoa. But what should I teach my puppy first? I answered that earlier. You guys can check that out. My GSD is four months old. She will not stop jumping on strangers. I checked that out too. Uh, I answered that earlier. Do you have any, Michelle asked, Tom, do you have any advice on helping an Amish puppy mill St. Bernard? Ooh, those are tough. Who is breeding? Who is a breeding dog? She wants no food, no interest in other dogs. Totally. Yeah, it's, um, those dogs are really tough. So those are some of the hardest uh, behavioral cases I've ever worked with. Um, the Amish uh, breeding dogs um, because they, yeah, they just, unfortunately, I think they just pump them out for money and they don't socialize them. And they're usually afraid of men with beards like me. Um, go figure. So um, the best thing to do is just give it time. Lots of exercise. So exercise, uh, you know, just, that's the best thing to do. Exercise and, you know, try to do the best you can, like maybe get some chicken, some white, white meat chicken, maybe some non-seasoned steak and just do the best you can to say like, hey, like let's play and just get them engaged because the dog has been so long not doing anything. The dog literally has been like just used as, you know, uh, just used. I mean, so the dog isn't engaged with anything. They don't understand how to be a dog and you have to teach them that. So you just have to get creative and like if your dog isn't motivated by food, but what food are you using? Are you using kibble? Mm, try to like bump it up a notch um, and just do the best you can to like really get the dog motivated and just bring the dog out for exercise. Like I always say, like worst comes to worst. If your dog isn't like feeling happy or you don't whatever, just bring them for a walk, get them out into nature. They'll, they'll be happy. <clears throat> um, uh, let's see. Is there a good way to train your puppy that takes rides in your vehicle without crying? Um, yeah, the crate is a good thing for dogs uh, if they're not good in the car. Um, by by the way, 326 people in here. That's like a record for me. I'm so grateful for that. 328. If you guys are here, like this video. We're gonna do a giveaway. I'm doing this in appreciation for you guys because I didn't post some videos this week, and we're gonna do this again in the future. I appreciate you guys very much. Um, so that's why I'm doing this. It's just my gratuity and my uh, my feedback to you guys. I'm just doing the best I can here with all these questions. You guys from all over the world. It's really fun. Um, but as far as the puppy in the crate, just make sure you're not adding on to the stress or your dog's whining and you're going, it's okay, what's wrong? Don't do that. Just ignore it. Maybe, uh, maybe um, get the dog into the crate. If your dog is food motivated, put your dog in the car, in the crate, and feed them in the car without it moving to desensitize getting into the car. Um, 
So just do the best you can to desensitize and get really creative to say, how can I make the car a good place for my dog? Um, so do the best you can to like, just put the dog in the car, desensitize it, motivate him, all that stuff. So you're doing an amazing job. Thank you. Thank you so much. That means the world. Um, please help. Not many dogs in Zimbabwe. My dog is super friendly, but with dogs won't stop barking when he sees other dogs walking. Uh, okay, so here's what I would suggest really quickly. Get yourself one of these slip collars and go out and work on your heel and work on your leave it and use this as an enforcer. Uh, I have a DIY training collar video on how to make this exact collar and you're just going to work on engagement. You're going to work with food motivation, get your dog to look at you, get your dog engaged with you. Um, and that's what I would start off with. Work on leave it, work on heel, micro, macro. Work inside first and then train your dog outside after. Hope that helps. Dan, how do I get my boxer calm so I can train him? Um, slip collar is a good way. So the dog is going all over, firing, firing on off all cylinders and all that stuff. Um, the best thing to do is just use a leash and just say, hey, whoa, whoa, calm down, because the dog is going to keep firing up, firing up. Correct the dog, say, calm down. Dogs don't speak English, so with kids, we say, hey, calm down. You need to calm down, or I'm going to do this. I'm going to take away your iPhone. I'm going to take away your iPad, no cartoons, whatever, and then the child calms down, right? We're using some sort of consequence um, and adding positive punishment to the mix or negative punishment to take something away. Um, so the best thing to do when you get an uncontrolled dog is add something to the mix that's going to help or remove something that's, that's going to help. Um, how can I train my dog to not react when cars, um, again, train your dog to, to, to leave it, um, yeah, dominant dog collars are great too, um, that's, that's what I've been talking about this whole time, Robin, it's a slip collar, that's another word for it. Our vibration collar is as good as the stimulation collar. Is the stimulation collar is illegal in my country? Yeah, if it's illegal, then heck yeah, it's better than nothing. If you can reach out and communicate and touch your dog from a half a mile away, it's better than not being able to, so for sure. But I just find that the vibration collars are really aversive. They're very corrective compared to the stimulation collars that I use. So, um, We have two puppies. Any tips on training them at the same time again since they're around each other at the same time? David, good question. Train them separately, right? So train one puppy over here, one puppy over here, and then um, train them on all the basics and then bring them together because you're going to lose your mind trying to train two puppies at the same time. So I take my puppy. Scott asks, I take my puppies outside to the potty and I let them pull on the leash to explore. Is that counter? No, absolutely not. It's a great question, Scott. Uh, just say break, mark it, make it on your terms. That's all. Same thing with my dogs. Like if I bring my dogs out for a walk, I don't care if they pull me the whole time. I have the ability to turn on. Training starts when you start. So when you ask your dog to do something, that's when it starts. If your dogs are pulling, it doesn't mean they're not trained. That means you're allowing them to do that. Just like with human behavior, we're not always certain way for certain things. So you just have to make sure that you're, um, you know, you're, you're, you're marking it saying good, you know, break or whatever. Um, so anyway, so I just wanted to say thank you guys for joining me. If you haven't yet like this video, we have over 300 people. Whew, awesome. So happy. We're going to do this again in the future. We're going to do a giveaway. Um, and then also two guys, don't forget, I'm going to be in the UK in the spring. We're going to release all that information on my socials, Instagram, Facebook here on YouTube, of course. And I want to meet as many people as we can when we go to, to UK and do that. So I, this is the first time I'm announcing it. And in the future, we're also going to do uh, probably a super chat here so you guys can support me in, in a different way. And it's going to be a lot of fun because um, you get these like cool little badges. Um, so what I'm going to do really quick, guys, I'm going to do a giveaway. I'm going to give away one of my free online uh, free online. I'm not going to do an online training because it's really hard for me to put those in my schedules right now. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a giveaway uh, on a, a No Bad Dogs training leash. Signature Series Tom Davis No Bad Dogs training leash. All you guys have to do is once this video ends is go into the actual video and then comment where you're from. And then I'm going to select one person in the next 24 hours to win that. I'm going to ship it out to you. Um, and anyway, I appreciate you guys so much um, for, for joining me. I'm very grateful. And again, I, I did this because I appreciate you guys. I, there's, I just wanted to give back as much as I can because you guys are, you, you know, you guys have been supporting me, liking me, commenting on everything, uh, defending me in some cases, which I appreciate. So thank you guys so much for joining me. I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day. Good week. If you're into Monday, awesome rest of your weekend. If you're into Sunday, I'll talk to you guys next time. Peace.